everybody, Donkey here, and <laughs> sorry it's been a while, but uh, I haven't been uh, doing videos for uh, quite a while. Uh, I thought I'd take a break, but I'm back, and I thought we'd get into some Sims this time around. Um, I've want I, I play Sims off camera a lot, and I thought I'd bring them to uh, to you guys on on YouTube. So uh, today we're in Train Sim World. And we are on the Great Western Express uh, DLC. Um, and we will be taking out this. This uh, Class 6-6. Six, six. Uh, in this mission, we've got to take some... What looks like... Uh, uh, crushed stone or something to a facility. And then we've got to take the, the loco down the uh, down the line a bit. So uh, let's get right into it here. Um, at the moment, she's cold. She's... Uh, it's not turned on, not moving, so we need to uh, need to start her up. Let's get in here. Now, the Class 6-6 six six is probably one of Britain's most iconic modern uh, locomotive. Um, it's used all over the UK and, and sometimes in Europe. Uh, and it, it carries all our freight across the country. Um, it's seen in a vast, vast like there's so many liveries that it that it comes in and it carries so much stuff so it's what, probably one of britain's most like if you're a train enthusiast you'll know exactly what this loco is but we need to start her up first so let's uh switch these on we should get the three uh safety buzzers Warning people that uh, we're starting up. Oh, mighty, mighty engine. Alright, we need to put this to run. Let's get this out. And yeah, we are we are ready. Let's turn this on. Uh, it's turning us parking brake is applied. We can actually just take that off. There you go, he's released. Sweet. So, uh, yeah, we need to enter slow mode and take... Oh, let's go in here. We need to take all this crushed stone or, or gravel down to the facility down there. So let's do that. Let's. Uh, we need to enter the slow mode up here, right there. Let's turn this switch on and set this to about three. Oh, no, we need to put it into reverse first. Let's uh, do that. There we go. Now I'll set this to three. You don't want to jump ahead with this because uh, I've had it where if you jump ahead, you it, the game tends to get a little confused. Now we will talk more about this this game as we go here, but we're just gonna release the brakes here. You can see there that the, the uh, needle going up to five. Pressure is being released off the uh, off the air brakes. And as soon as we start, well, as soon as I put this into throttle one, you can see the uh, the amps going up there. We should start moving. Let's get some lights as well. Let's get some lights in here. Uh, tail lights, why not? Let's turn this to daytime running. And we can see our miles per hour up here. Let's just put that into notch two. Now, because of this slow speed mode, we won't go above three miles an hour it'll actually it's like cruise control it will actually bounce it back down so it won't go above three we can just leave that we can just roll in wow i want to get a wow just look at that what a mighty mighty machine that is amazing now this mission's called uh, Aggregate Industries, um, and what's, what that is referring to is this material in the back here. Um, it's basically coarse material that's used into construction. Uh, it's usually either sand, gravel, or stone, and uh, it's carried by the railways. Uh, it's quite quite often seen in these sort of hoppers, hopper cars, and so. That's what the uh, the mission name is referring to. Wow, they did such a good job with this 6-6. Six, six. 
do the blinds, get that down a little bit. You can open the windows. Can't open that one as well, but you can do both of these. Amazing. This game is is actually beautiful. Uh, it's it's running on the Unreal Engine, and I'll tell you what they've they've really really done done a good job with this game. Uh, the graphics look really good, really good improvement over the old train sim. Now, the old train sim is still going, it's in uh, 2019 at the moment. I do play that game, um, but I don't really engage. Passenger train. I don't really engage with the old train sim like this game. I feel like it's, it's a bit difficult to play, if you will. Um, and you know the game, the game automatically puts me off when I start playing it. Uh, but this game, this game in, engages with me. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, I don't know if it's the graphics or whether it's the way, the ease of use that you can learn uh, an engine. I mean, I've learned this engine in less than five hours. Um, when you know on something like Train Sim 2019, it might take you a day or two. So. I mean, I'm a very impatient person. Sometimes I'm, I've got a short attention span, so you know, to tell me that I've got to spend a day or two learning a learning an engine is it can get frustrating for me. But I mean, I, I learnt this thing in, in less than five hours, um, and I know it is pretty basic. It's it's one of the basic, most basic in locos you can get. I mean, you can't push any of these or anything, but. Compared to some of the other ones on this game, uh, this is one of the simpler ones. Uh, but yeah, like I, I mean, I do enjoy this game a lot. Slowly going into the yard. Let's go have a look, shall we? Go get under the bridge. So this is where we're dumping. Whoa. We'll, uh, we'll get like a bird's eye view of uh, of this. There we go. But yeah. Um, what else can I say about this game? There is a few underlining problems with this game um, that I hope they address. Uh, the first one is replayability. Um, this game has engaged with me. I really like it, but the replayability of it is... I've played every mission I can on the Great Western Express DLC and I don't feel like going back and playing them again. I mean, I, I'm going back and playing this one for you today, but I, once you've played the missions, that's it, you know. And you can do a basic service of on this game, which will put you in a 6-6, for example, and uh, you'll basically do, like, one of its routes. Uh, why aren't we... Are we unloading? Yeah, we're unloading. So yeah, you, you know, you can do a basic service of this game, um, but you don't get to choose really where you do it. Uh, you don't really get to choose what cargo to take. Uh, the only thing you really get to choose is what weather the you like you drive in and what livery the uh, the loco is. Um, I mean, sometimes you don't even get to change. The delivery um, interesting side note the the classic six came in a wide variety of, of liveries um, most commonly seen around the UK in in EWS um, livery but off the top of my head I have personally seen uh, the DB Shanker um, livery uh, the Freightliner the green Freightliner livery that's that's really uh, really iconic um, and there's also a blue one direct rail that's it direct rail um, yeah 6-6 six, six, great great engine but yeah the game is uh, that that's one of the underlying problems is um, the replayability and uh, the the second underlying problem is they don't bring DLC out quick enough um, 
once you've played a DLC, you can complete it in, well, I'd, I'd say a day or, or, you know, if you're like me, I like to span it out. You can play it in a week, um, a DLC. And then that's it. Once, you, once you've done that, you've completed it. Then you've got to wait another, well, I think they release DLCs every three to six months. So you kind of just got to wait around until then. Um, the DLCs are amazing when they come out. You know, the graphics are great. The quality of the uh, of the models are great. I mean, look at this. They model everything on these. Every pipe, every you know, little little details. They they model it. And you get a great, great model for the price. It's actually quite a cheap price to pick these DLCs up. There, they're about twenty pounds to about twenty four pounds. So. You know they're not not truly expensive for what you get. I mean, you get a decent couple of locomotives, you get a decent route, but and a couple of missions. But you know that's that's kind of it. Um, so once you've completed a mission, that's you know you, you you're kind of waiting around for the next the next uh, the next DLC. But hopefully they will uh, will quicken up on the DLC. Uh, set this to there. Set this to neutral. Ah, turn the slow speed off. Yep, I think we can just do that. That was great work. You should get that train over to Ankton Yard, but it can be prepared before the return trip to the Mendips. Ankton Yard. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, it seems that we've just got to move out of here first. So we need to set this to forward. Release the automatic brakes. And give it some throttle. So it's 465 yards. So let's have a look where that is. Literally just down the line here. Just gotta stop down there. Sounds good to me. Let's turn um, quickly. Um, objective markers. Oh, there we go. I usually turn those off because um, it it points out where everything is for you. It, it kind of dumbs it down, which is great if you're if you're learning the, the loco straight off. Um, but I already know where most of the most of the controls are, um, so I don't need it to point it out for me. So I usually turn those off. But it's okay pointing out where to stop. But yeah, like another thing with this loco, like they've they've actually modelled all the fuses and stuff in here. Which is amazing. We can turn AWS on, but um, I think I'll leave it off for now because it does it does get quite annoying. But you can turn that on. I mean, you can like get up, open the doors, get outside the locomotive. I wish you could get into the engine bay and have a look, but I guess that is uh, that is too much get in the co-driver's seat. You've got all the heater controls and everything. Just amazing. And I mean for the price that you know you pay for this, especially on a Steam sale. I picked this uh, this pack up in the Steam sale. Um, and I think it was less than £15. And for, for that price that is that is really good. Some train sim packs you know that they're so expensive, and you you barely get anything with them. I, I fear when I buy train sim packs that I, I'm getting I'm not getting my value for money, if you will. Um, but train sim does do a few things well, better than this game. Um, for instance, you can create a route. You can choose what livery of you know loco you want to take. You can choose what rolling stock to have, you, you know, you could customise so much on Trainsim. 
and just to make you know every journey different even if you're doing the same route over and over you can make it different every time uh, which this game doesn't really have yet but I'm hoping that they're, they're going to address that um, but I mean so far I'm, I'm enjoying this game uh, I engage with it a lot more than Train Sim so I will keep playing it and uh, I really I only buy the uh, the English um, packs for this and there's a few American and a few German packs but those don't really interest me because well that, that's not really where I live so I don't I don't have any connection with the, with the locomotives or, or anything to do with that now the speed limit is 15 I think so sort of gently roll over get ready on the brake I think I can apply the brake yeah so about a four I think slow us down beautiful uh, green lights all the way by those things so uh, Alright, so I haven't played this mission before, but that was a while ago. <laughs> I might play the other missions if, if this video gets a lot of demand, uh, or if this game gets a lot of demand, I might play the others. Uh, I've bought a few other packs. Um, I've bought the uh, West Somerset rail pack, so... That'll be interesting because I want to see if they've done their research on that pack. Um, even though the West Somerset and Dorset Railway is mostly, it is a heritage line, but it's mostly steam. They haven't actually implemented steam yet into this game. So I want to see if they've done their research with the diesels that um, Somerset and Dorset has. They do have a few diesels, but not many. So I want to see if they've... I mean, I imagine they have. But it's nice to see if they've actually been accurate. We are gaining speed slowly, but we don't want to just ramp into the, uh, the maximum. The maximum speed of this vehicle is 75. I think it is actually uh, capped at 65, though, but... station might as well try the horn. <laughs> the horns on the British diesels are brilliant. Hello. And this looked like it was a siding. Of some sort. Looks like this guy's waiting to uh Two passenger trains, well. Yeah, two drivers. Looks like this guy is an EWS as well. Looks like he's waiting to join the uh, join the main line here. So he he'll be coming up to our line after we've passed through probably. Oh it's a it's a foggy day. Foggy, foggy day. The scenery is all right in this game. It's it's sort of slightly better than Train Sim, but not not much better. Um, train Sim seems to do the one thing that they can't get right is scenery. Um, 
yeah, you're not really focused on the scenery, you're more focused on what's going on in here and just in the track area, but, but scenery is a big part, like I'd like to see some cars going past, you know, I'd like to see people walking around and working, you know, I'd like to see the world lived in, at the moment it just looks dead. getting some stutters but I hope that's just uh, because I am recording I am actually playing on a uh, on an ultra wide screen um, the game's running in my resolution which is uh, where is it 21 by 9 I think and I, I can see you know, this game's running in that resolution, but it's recording in 1920 by 1080. Um, so, we'll see. I mean, having an ultra wide is great when you're not recording. You know, you can watch movies and stuff and play a simulator like this and have it ultra wide, but uh, going over the speed limit a little. There we go. Just uh, bring that down. How much we need to be right now? Not paying attention to the speed. We got another speed change. No, it's been that right now. Yeah, having an ultra ride brings problems. Obviously, uh, like when recording, I need to record in a lower resolution so that I can actually upload it onto YouTube. Let's get some more, uh, more from the outside. actually stopping in 700 yards, so we better bring this down. Oh, we better bring it right down. We've got to bring it down to 15 in 200 yards. Bloody hell. Not definitely. Let's just let off that. See if we can just coast her in. That's going to be perfect. Just slightly off. Slightly out. Slightly out. There we go. Okay. You'll need to refuel before the return trip, so detach from the wagons and move the locomotive over to the fuel stand. Alright, so let's apply the parking brake so that we don't actually go anywhere. Um, and we need to put this to neutral. Throttle's on zero. Parking brake is applied, hopefully. Parking brake applied, so we should, you know, start sliding backwards I don't think that's, that's most of my character I really. think it's sketchy the train's not actually moving yeah. nope oh, let's just jump off so we need to uncouple it 
so we can actually go into here. I mean, look at the detail here. My goodness, so we can actually go here and uncouple this. Literally, we just need to find the right, the right point. Oh, I had it then. Maybe underneath it. There we go. Got it. Need to get in there like a man. So we're going down to the refuel point down there, okay, so let's do parking brake release, listen to forward, and uh, release the brake. Let's go. Let's start applying some brake. Quite there, not quite there. Always cutting it short. Apply the air brakes. Parking brake on. Oh. Before we do anything, let's put that to neutral. That is on zero. Yep. So we definitely aren't going anywhere. Let's close that door up. Oh. Can't quite get there. Oh well. Ah, so the refueling is actually over there. So, we, let's just check these points. Have they been set properly? So, yep, we're going to be following this round. Yep, we're going to be following that. I think we're good. But obviously we can change cab, so... This is where it gets a bit more interesting. So, what we want to do... Is... It's, uh... Shut the engine down. Right, uh, let's let's turn tail lights off and those to off. Let's do that. And let's shut it down. So turn that off. That off. Those off. So turn that off. So now, let's close that. Oh, we were floating in. Let's go in here, this side. And let's start her up on this side. Let's get some instrument lights, tail lights. Turn this to daytime running. And master key. We probably could have left it running, honestly, but um, I didn't want to. Didn't want to really risk it. So, um, what we want is we want that into forward. Let's release the brake on this side. Now, normally it would just get you to reverse it down there, but changing camps is a. Uh, it's another thing that you'll come to learn as you get more confidence with this thing. See, normally you wouldn't do this, you'd just put it into reverse, but I'm changing cap. Which just adds another dynamic to the game, you know. It, for this mission, it could have just been like, nope, all these don't work on this side, you're not allowed to touch them. You have to do it 
you know, by reversing at that end, but it actually allows me to come over here and start the engine up on this side. Which just adds a bit more dynamic to it, you know, I can I can play it how I want to play it. Now we should follow this round if the uh, the points have been set properly. And they have. This one's going straight, so we should be able to follow that in. Now, from past experience, I know that the points down here are manual points. See, those back there were um, controlled by a computer somewhere. Probably in the control. Uh, probably, I don't know where the control is actually on, on this route, but... Basically, a guy in an office would have cha changed those points for me. But as we get up here, they're a bit more manual, so we're going to have to do it ourselves. And that's okay. Again, that's another dynamic to the game. This is another problem I've got. Why is the render distance on these tracks so limited? This is Unreal 4 after all. These should be rendering in like round the bender. So that it looks nice and seamless, but they're not. They're rendering in here. It takes away from the immersion. But again, these guys are using an engine that they don't use normally, so all the quirks they're probably trying to figure out. Right, that's where we want to go, right there. So next set of points will stop and we'll figure out what we've got to do. So we can actually see them on here, I think. So we're here, coming down, and the next set of points is down here. Now we can actually switch that look. So we're going that way. We want to bring her into here, and then reverse her back. See, that's set right. At the moment, we'll leave that because we're coming in and then we'll follow that down now we want to switch that one actually to there so that's right we can get out and do it manually um, which I'll do on the one coming backwards I'll do on uh, on this one here when we bring her backwards. Most of the uh, most of the points in yards are are manual. It's very only really mainline that they uh, they haven't controlled by a computer. this point. Start slowing it down. Oh, you can hear the brakes coming on. Stopping this hunk. Right. Uh, throttle back. That's a there. Right. Let's, uh, Let's go do that point manually then. Just jump out of the loco. So, with points, as you can see, if we follow this route along, the whale's gonna cut like catch this and we're gonna go this way. On this side, it's gonna follow the straight onto that curve. So, if we wanna go that way, we need to switch this. And now what the wheel will do is come down this rail that way. And on this side it's going to catch this and go straight on. And these have been set to the right position. We can check. Right, look. It's going to go off that way. It's going to catch that and go on that way. So, we should be on the right way now. All we can do now is switch cab again. So we can switch to this side. It's going to be good. Uh, 
can stop it right there. Oh, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Throttle back. Turn into neutral. Parking brake applied. And we're good to go. Let's get out of this side. Why not? Oh. Right, fill a cam off. Get the hose and boom. And then we can turn this to start pumping fuel. See here that it was pretty much full to begin with. So I don't know why we had to refuel it, but there we go. What we done? There we go. Do we have to turn that off now? So, uh, I want to close that door. Close that door. <laughs> Just chip that side. You've got to hook it back up to the wagons. Okay. So let's have a look. We're currently in this side in here. So we want to go straight. Straight down here. Here's our wagons, I think. Oh, no, they're here. What? No, no, no. They're here. These are our wagons. So. Straight, straight, straight. Back into here. I think these are automated here. So yeah, we just need to take it straight down. Oops. Now I want to see guys here beyond this loco working, maybe prepping it. I want to see guys refueling. I want to see guys having a coffee or something next to these huts. I want to see the world lived in. But uh, hopefully they'll hopefully they'll get the, the gist of things once they uh, once they start learning the engine a bit more. I suppose. Mostly see EWS, which is England, Wales, and Scotland. That's where these logos operate. They probably operate in uh, in Ireland too, but don't know much. train hop on these can you Just slide right off those videos are insane though those train hopping videos people in America jumping on trains and going across country it's insane you wouldn't be able to do that in this country oh, no. trains are too short anyway they'd, they'd probably see you See, I've got wind mirrors here that don't work, but on a real train to drive, be able to see. Alright, let's try not to judge this one poorly like we did uh, that last one. So, we're going back that way. Are the points set for us? I think they are. Yeah, they are. Because they're a computer. Right. So, parking brake on. Let's get brakes down. And let's do that there. Throttle down. Sweet. 
and speed. That's it. Not that. Outside and couple it so I can break it off. Do that to there, to there, and we'll go take a look. Yeah, a couple. job well done. Grab a break in the porter cabin by the car park. Sounds us done. We'll go uh, grab a coffee and. Uh, that's it. So, if you enjoyed, please leave a like on this video, because then that will let me know if uh, you want me to do more. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you liked as well. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.